Good morning. Um, when Joel asked me to do this, uh, this is harder than uh, for me, a hermit like me, than uh, designing the car. <laughs> so so uh, bear with me, please. Um, but I am thrilled, absolutely thrilled uh, to be here and uh, uh, be part of this grand conversation on sustainability. Now, I'm a product design engineer, and I've been designing my whole life. Um, today, I'm going to speak about sustainability from my perspective. This is uh, me in Grasslands Park. This is the most beautiful place in the world, according to me. And the question um, that we need to answer is, how do we find the balance between technology and nature so that places like this are preserved? Today, I'd like to show you the personal journey I've been on in trying to answer this very important question. Today, I'd like to begin by showing you where I live. I live in a place uh, in the middle of Canada. Winnipeg is a wooded oasis with a pristine natural setting, full of wheat fields, and 100,000 natural lakes. So this is the environment that has uh, changed, uh, made me want to preserve nature. I always wanted to be a car designer from an early age, <laughs> and uh, so I became a mechanical engineer. I designed this car for the hybrid car for the energy crisis of the 70s. So now let me show you some of the projects I've worked on that uh, molded my thinking as well. Um, these are some tractors that I had to redesign. This is a swather that I worked on right from the beginning. This is a new pull type combine I worked on. I pretty well worked on new design my whole life. And we worked on about 10 cabs for ag and mining equipment. I always work on really big, powerful stuff. Uh, this is the biggest tractor in the world. Designed it as well. Worked on uh, city buses, intercity buses and city buses. And worked on controls. Uh, this is the one in the Freightliner Mercedes truck. And that led to work for the Canadian Space Agency on research on controls for the arm on the space station. So because I worked on new design my whole life, I got a lot of patents and uh, won even lucky enough to win some awards. But I, something was amiss, so I started uh, to worry about um, uh, what I was designing. I started reading Ivan Illich, and um, a major problem facing humanity, he said, is faulty design. And I started to agree with this position. Now I believe that 86% of um, what we see out there is unsustainable design. Why 86%? Because out of all the energy that humanity uses, 86% comes from fossil fuels. And this is unsustainable. Even the city is, suffers from faulty design because people who live here, uh, or sorry, who work here don't necessarily live here. And where people live, there's no work. So then you need the car to move uh, back and forth. And uh, today there's almost a billion cars in the world and by mid-century there could be two billion cars in the world. And the problem with uh, the car is that it uh, just doesn't address the, the environment. So this could lead to a global ecological catastrophe. As uh, the waste piles up and the landfills and this whole consumer um, idea sort of poisons our bodies and our minds into thinking that this is somewhat normal and somewhat acceptable. So what's the solution? Well, the solution resides within sustainable design. And uh, to do sustainable design, you need a very long view. Now, lucky for me, um, my brother my, uh, became a geologist. And uh, geologists are just masters at the long view. And my brother also introduced me to this man, Ian McCarg, who's a landscape architect by training, but um, is, um, he holds the key, he's the father of ecological design, and he holds the key to sustainability. So I started to design different, and we made this vehicle as a display for the Seattle Bicycle Expo. This is like human-powered vehicles running around in tunnels. And from this project, we, we did Solos Micro Metro, which is a PRT system designed in 1994 and still the most energy efficient public transit yet conceived. 
And those two vehicles led to this car, so I'm finally designing a car. And um, uh, it began in 1996. And we called it Urbi because it's an urban electric vehicle. And we think all urban centers could benefit from a car like this. So let me talk now about my focus now, which is this Urbi car. And, and I'm going to talk a little bit about car design. Designing a car is extremely difficult because cars are full of fantasy and style. Cars uh, today have big grills, even though they're um, the telltale of energy inefficiency. Cars have lots of exhaust pipes. Sort of the more, the better. So this is a great car. <laughs> yeah. And, this, and then, of course, this would be even better. So just for a moment, just think the total opposite to the typical car. And you get close to what we're talking about here, which is a low energy uh, car. Now, this isn't uh, rocket science, uh, because we decided to use just existing technologies. We're just uh, engineers, and we're going to apply science. And also, we have this idea that a car should be easy uh, to understand by most people, easy to maintain, repair, and rebuild after a long life. So think of Irby as sort of the Model T of the 21st century, or the Volkswagen Beetle, uh, with just sort of emissions and safety kind of improved and also not, ru not running on gasoline. These were frugal cars that sold by the millions and were very, um, uh, had a worldwide following. So here's the project in a nutshell. Uh, sunlight hits a piece of land, and um, a garage might be on there, and then we kind of drive around on that energy. We pick up that energy on, with solar panels, windmills, hydro, ethanol. So just for a moment, as one example, just imagine this garage. This car goes in and out of it. The technology inside the garage looks something like this. And imagine winning. It would be like winning fuel for life. You know? So this is really appealing, but is it actually possible? Well, consider this. In barrels of oil or equivalent per year, humans use this amount. And available from sunlight is this amount. So there's lots of energy available in sunlight. The problem is that we can only utilize a tiny portion. A number to think about is it's about 100 times less than the, what we can utilize in oil. And that's, you can see this easily enough because solar airplanes kind of look like this. They can carry one person, and passenger aircraft on oil can carry all of us. Solar boats uh, kind of look like canoes and nothing like the gas-powered boats. And the solar racing car is kind of a fragile, impractical thing compared to the, the car of today. So we need a certain strategy if we're going to make this work. And, and I'm going to show you now what that is. So this, this is the strategy behind Irby. <laughs> okay. So the basic principle be, behind Irby is right here. Now this may, uh, and the idea is to use less dog to pull a dog sled. Now this may look impossible. But the, but the solution lies in changing the dog sled and making it more energy efficient, getting rid of excess, all that kind of stuff. Now, instead of dogs, I like using horsepower because uh, we all kind of know what a horse looks like and how much power is in, in a horse. So think of this. One of the smallest cars you can buy today is the Citroën C1, and it has 68 horsepower under the hood. Now, if I drew this out in front of an old wagon, it would look something like this. Now this, of course, looks ridiculous. In, in the old days, you would never have done this. And you could never have fed them with hay. So when we analyzed the trips of the Sichuan, uh, what we found was that these horses in red aren't being used for most trips, if, if at all. So we decided to just put those on the wagon. So, so this looks just as ridiculous, of course. Uh, but when you analyze this trip, what you find is that these horses are just pulling the other horses around. OK, so and what you're left with then, if you get, leave all those horses you don't need at home, is this, eight horses. And this is starting to look better, and that's what Irby is. Irby is a car with, that uses eight horsepower. Now, maybe with further progress, we can get to here, which is um, you know, two horses, and that's where we should be at. But for now, Irby looks something like this. So this car has been designed totally to reduce the energy of movement. 
Now, uh, some of our sponsors said, you guys are kind of a strange bunch. You're designing a simple car using all these high-tech tools. So I'm going to just show you some of the tools we've used to get here. Um, we started this whole project not visualizing the car at all, just doing calculations. So we got a deep understanding of energy. And then we started to design the car in Autodesk using uh, some of the latest software. We designed the whole car. And then we molded the body out of clay. This is a traditional way because we wanted to see and feel the shapes and live with them for a while. And then Tebas in Detroit scanned this clay model and then cleaned up the CAD model, made it all just perfectly symmetrical. And then we could verify the aerodynamics with CD Adapco to make sure that what all the assumptions we had made were correct. And so we couldn't improve on this shape at all. And then we partnered with Stratasys, who used this machine uh, to make all the giant body parts. Now, usually rapid prototyping is done in small parts, but uh, these were very big parts. So this is the rear of the car body, uh, and we were the first um, car, I guess, to be 3D printed. We took our car in progress to the SEMA show, and um, we got quite a bit of attention here, media attention, which a bunch of designers that work in a small shop aren't quite used to. And um, we had about 12 million, at its peak, 12 million hits uh, or impressions on Google. And uh, we used Autodesk Showcase before we had the body to kind of show people where we were going. So here we are standing around the frame, and here's the body done just on, on CAD. Here's another image. Uh, done by CAD, all done on uh, Autodesk Showcase software before we had the body. Now, what's the big deal in uh, designing for sustainability like this? Well, there's many advantages, but if I had to pick one, this is it. If we compare primary energy, the energy that one must find or capture in order to do the trip, then near where I live, there's an ethanol plant, a small wind farm, and there's a lot of dams, but this one particular dam, so these three facilities could power er about a million Irbys. Just these three. And if we took the same trips that Irby took and used a Toyota Prius and then made the Prius somehow run on renewable energy, we would need 12 times what I just showed you to do the same trips. So that's the big deal. But what have I learned about sustainability um, in general? Well, I've learned that energy is, is not cheap or abundant. Uh, so I treat energy as precious. And everything I design, I try to use the least amount of energy. And I think it is practical to use daily sunlight to run a car on a daily basis. There's a lot of energy there, more energy than we will ever need. And if you think of technology as the Queen Mary, you know, designed for fossil fuels, we have to somehow change that ship that, that keeps us afloat back into a sailing ship. And as far as the car or transportation, or the car in particular, is concerned, I use horsepower as my gauge. And a true progress is a car that uses less and less horsepower, not more. I use nature as my teacher. And I think that we can design technologies that uh, sort of capture the thermal energies that seem to come our way. I hope that uh, this project has uh, given you some food for thought, I hope, and uh, inspired you a little bit to design uh, things uh, sustainably. I want to certainly thank all the sponsors that uh, have supported us in this uh, very important project. And there is a technical paper available for those that really want to get into it. And you can see us on the web at urbi.net. And now I'm going to just show you a little video here. Oh, sorry. I knew it. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> there. So this is uh, Irby the first time out at Birds Hill Park. Uh, Irby is uh, from 0 to 40 miles an hour is an electric vehicle and from 40 to 70 miles an hour is a, uh, works off the internal combustion engine, which we hope to run on pure ethanol. Um, yeah. Well, Bird's Hill isn't very hilly, as you can see, but the first time out, it couldn't hardly make it up the hill. 
but things have improved. We've had it out about 10 times now, and we've solved quite a few technical problems, and uh, we should have, the, the body is on it right now in our shop, and we hope to have the car finished in two, about two months. Um, here it is at Gimli, and uh, you can see this on the web as well. And then we were in a parade of all things in Winnipeg, and this is the parade, so it's the first time we had it on the actual street. Okay, so uh, that's about it. I, I'm going to have a model of the vehicle on display during the break, and um, I just uh, really appreciate your attention, and uh, good luck with uh, all your sustainable projects. Uh, remember that the solution resides within all of us, and from what I saw yesterday, a lot of, uh, especially in this room. Thank you very much. Absolutely.